Welcome back to the ISF World Esports Championship Regional Qualifiers here in the Europe region. We have just witnessed five explosive games. We have one more game coming up. And um, all we just witnessed was uh, quite the upset, I'd say, Kobo. Azerbaijan yeah. taking home a massive win. Lots of people in the chat were very happy with this one. But um, yeah, before we head on over to the last game, we will take a look at the leaderboard because I think that changes everything. We said Azerbaijan yeah. was one of the teams that was all the way down on the second page and even further down on the second page and just the yeah. start of it and look where they have found themselves now after that massive massive round they were in 17th and now they're in sixth and now they are just seven points away from qualifying to the world esports championship with that one big round we were criticizing them you were saying you're not sure why they're taking fights early so much every single round and that one good game and they're all the way towards the top the top is still stacked here france has catched up caught up massively to turkey three points gap is all that there is um but yeah it is uh, it is so 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 doable for all these bottom teams they just need a big game but you would hope they get it now because if you're really not starting before tomorrow if you're going into the break if you're going to bed with nine points today, in uh, being confident tomorrow, it's going to be very tricky, right? Yeah, almost impossible, I'd say. In a lobby like this, uh, you, you, you'll meet one of these top teams sooner or later. And if you can't make it past these fights consistently, like we've seen France do, for example, like we've seen Turkey do, Ukraine do, Romania do even now, um, then you're not going to qualify. That's, that's just the harsh reality of it. If you cannot consistently win these fights, and we said with 21 teams in the lobby like this, I think it's going to be even more important. It's not going to be about rotation necessarily because rotations are not going to be able to get done as much. You'll, you'll have to play straightforward a little bit more than what you usually do. So with that, with that being, you know, kind of left, left, left to the to the side of things, um, and it coming down more towards fighting. Once again, your chances increase that you will need to fight a team that is, first of all, incredibly experienced, and second of all, incredibly. Um, incredibly strong in fighting and has the confidence to do so as well the current leaderboard situation we have four five maybe even six teams that are just running away with it in terms of kills and if that happens you know how much impact confidence has if you meet a turkish player right there yeah. we saw it literally happen in the last round you might even lose it two before against them if they're confident if they expect you then you're not going to clean these frags up easily and at that point it becomes almost impossible to qualify for a team down the ladder it's a momentum thing. It's it's a numbers thing as well, right? The more chances you miss, the harder it gets and the more yeah. outrageous your performance would have to be right now. Um, they've put themselves in the conversation here, Azerbaijan. A lot of other countries have not done that. Germany has not done that. And I, I think we've seen some teams down there towards the bottom that are really, really struggling if you're looking at Hungary and, and Luxembourg. But plenty of teams around that double digit range, but that haven't been able to push it much further. And it's, it's a mix of things. And like you said, right, confidence is a thing. Momentum is a thing. But it's also starting to become a numbers thing at some point. So yeah, they'll have one more chance today. They'll have one more chance to make things right and, and push themselves towards that top. Um, but it, it's much easier to stay on top or at least stay towards the top than it is to, to just roll the field up from behind. Because um, you can you can if you're Turkey, you can get away with a, a three kill game there and not worry about it at all not gonna touch your confidence at all if you're in azerbaijan and you miss another game not the same thing yeah no it's definitely not the same thing we we said that's why we was so happy that the ukraine and kind of turkey whole job didn't happen that one round where they actually did win um massive coincidence on that part or maybe not so much a coincidence as, as maybe some some people say in the chat um but yeah as you said momentum plays a big part in it you don't get going right away. I think Germany is kind of in that spot as well. They have some experienced players, but they just kind of seem to make it work. They just kind of seem to get on the roof of things. But one round where they do pick up frags early on, they actually get relatively far. I think that's the furthest they've gone in this round. So it goes to show you, you need that momentum early on. You need to win these fights consistently. But as soon as you hit maybe a Romania, things do get tougher. And at that point, you will need to stay strong. You will need to stay uh, and fight with confidence. And that's what we've not seen from these guys unfortunately as much as we've seen it from other teams and also that winning kind of mentality um that we've seen from azerbaijan as well now that we've seen from belarus and especially france going for an actual win not just thinking about the next zone thinking about the next three phases especially from turkey in that one round i want to quickly highlight that 
they haven't only cleared their edge. They've cleared even more than that because they knew they needed that. If they don't clear these, these players earlier than what they need to, they'll have problems later on. And that's why, yes, sometimes it looks r rather risky what they're doing. But at the end of the day, it, it all goes towards the ultimate goal of winning a round. And that's why they're so dangerous as opposed to some of these lesser experienced teams. Dangerous times when you meet the top dogs, but there is one more plane in the air, Felix. There's enough yapping from us. There's a plane going across Miramar. It's a little bit off to the western side, but not terribly, not terribly far from most of these teams. The, the Cruste Vallejo drop, that's a little bit too far, but most of the teams should be able to get themselves a decent loot spot from this plane path. They should have one more chance to put their stamp on this leaderboard. Turkey going towards the Picardo area. The Ukraine instantly dropping out early. It's what they've been liking to do early on their edges a lot of the time. And uh, taking what they see free, taking what they think is free and doing so again. Looking for France. Can't see them yet, but I'm sure we'll see them around the San Martin area. Not sure if there's going to be another hot drop because they've won the last one very convincingly. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think they'll just dodge and focus on their own game, which is what you should do in a best of 12. I can only repeat this. Um, maybe if you're one of the top teams, you can afford to lose a hot shot, like we've seen Turkey do, like we've seen Ukraine do. But for anyone else, it's uh, it's only going to mean trouble. And there's the next hot shot coming in. Germany once again trying to beat Azerbaijan towards these spots. And it looks like they actually did uh, fly relatively well. But if it's going to be enough, we're going to see that in a minute. Because Azerbaijan, if any team is on a high right now, it is Azerbaijan. So, unfortunately for Germany, that's who they'll be facing. Early kill for Ovalari. Just ran someone over with the car there, I think. That probably was a Spain player. But that is a free, free kill for him. Notorious gets himself a kill towards Luxembourg on the other side of things. Just like that, Bulgaria is picking it up. I see he's been a big man for them. He's been the big carry. He has had them in their backpack. Um, but they're one of those teams as well. They have made a bit of an impression on the leaderboard. They're in, well in contention for qualification here. So them taking a hot drop towards Luxembourg. You wouldn't love to see it, but with what we've seen from Luxembourg so far, they've had a really, really rough start into this tournament. So Bulgaria is probably feeling mighty fine about taking that 4v4. Yeah, as I said, I think they'll, they'll be pumped up on the confidence they've just received. And I'd be surprised if if they if they would lose more than two players here. But then again, we also said that hot jobs, they they are tough to predict. Um, not only at times, but I want to say at most times. Uh, in my less experienced teams, if, if the angles are right, if the individual strength uh, it just shines through, and let's be honest, most of these players have massive individual strength. And if it shines through, and if it's not about rotations anymore, decision making as much, then um, Iman and Azerbaijan, who've literally just destroyed the lobby, can be in quite a big trouble. And we're seeing the first players now going back and forth. Azerbaijan would want to waste time. Interesting enough, they're going to be the ones to close distance towards Germany, even though that isn't necessarily what they need. They could have just stayed back. They had more angles. They had they had Germany trapped down in that little uh, rectangle towards the center of the of the map, uh, of the city rather. But they still decide to close the distance. They wanna they wanna get to they wanna get this done fast. Hungary taking out France. That's big news. That's not something we would have expected. That is not the hard drop we thought we had happen, and it is not the team we thought would go out. First team to go back to lobby with zero eliminations. As the shotguns come out, the trade's there for Germany. But they are now bunched into just one building. They've got to be careful with the util, but they're looking to put some power in numbers into this fight. And I'm not sure if that's a confirm or a second knock. I think that's the second confirm here. So they've put this down to a 4v2 now. So if Clutch can't pull off some sort of miracle, this is looking good for Germany. To yeah, at least really, get something going. Really good stuff coming out from Germany. And look at this, they're immediately reacting. They know there's one player on the southern side. I really like this approach now. Germany, make sure to isolate that one player. And they spotted him as well. They've spotted him just vaulting towards the southern side, outside of the building. And they're hunting him right now. It's the correct thing to do. Got to be careful, though. As soon as he groups, it might be back to a 4 on 2 or 3 on 2 depending on where the last player from Germany is located at. And look what they're fighting for. With this circle, 
I can understand now that Azerbaijan would, was, was trying to get things done fast because the entire Zerg right now is free and open towards them. The most centralized team, they just need to grab that hot job and win the contest for them to get prime spots in this one. And that's where the hot drop stings the most when you have a good zone because you're throwing it away in, essentially, right? Everybody else is already making the moves. Armenia now, same hot drop as last time. They're trying to close this out versus Albania. And the Nox are not going their way right now. They were able to pick up the first, and it feels like they've picked a very isolated fight here. They've basically found the solo member. And that solo member gets two Nox with I see on the minimap more players coming on in, but they are so spread apart here, Falix. They are so isolated. And even though he gets two knocks in a one versus four, I don't think his team is able to capitalize on this at all. No, I'm surprised he didn't make a bigger move on that either. I mean, he had a nade. If you have two players knocked down already, essentially that means if one guy's reviving, it's a one on one, right? So I would have loved to see him make, make more out of it, but the timing has already passed, Andre. He's going to have to think about it once more, and I think he does decide to just up the distance. As Aminia is rotating off into the sunset, they will try to try and regroup. He could catch the last player, though. Hey, he's shooting at him. Oh. Good shots all around, but I think he barely missed him. He did hit the corner of the compound there. And, okay, I was thinking about it. Is he going to stop here? Or is he going to rotate on through? No, he's stopping. Hard choice to be... make, but I think it's the blue that's keeping him here. The blue's on there. Oh, yeah. makes him not want to rotate. That nade looked spicy there for a second, but... He does have the hay bale to play with. Now he has the numbers in support. But look at the HP on some of these players. They're coming back, but three of them are very, very low. Pusher is the only one that really has HP to work with. They have to be careful on how they approach this. This is not an easy fight now. Yes, they have the numbers, but this is not clean. Turkey, on the other hand, seems to have gotten away with another fall and uh, not losing a member in the process. Yeah, I've gotten away with it. Four frags. Everyone gets one, apparently. And it's another four frags. We, we talked about this. This is exactly the kind of point split they need to just continuously stay in the run for a qualification spot. Like, they do not need to do anything else throughout, I want to say, the rest of the tournament. Look look where the split is right now. They have more than double the points they need to stay inside the top five. So, consistently wrecking our points. I, I do believe the, the point caught up is going to be somewhere around 80 Maybe 85 points. That's that's what I could imagine Pytorf being. So, Turkey, if they continue like this, they'll be, they'll be above 90 easily. And that should be enough in terms of qualification. But, also, depends on how top-heavy it's going to be tomorrow. That, once yeah. again, we do have candidates in there. For example, Serbia, that right now is below Germany on the overall leaderboard. And that, uh, they have literally have two players that just played the biggest tournament of the year. In yeah. the PUBG Mobile Esports. So, um, I mean... Upsets can happen, and there could be more teams joining the top ranks. I'm saying that Turkey is qualified with 71 points. That's my prediction, all right? You've been asking me for predictions every single game in the last broadcast. This is yeah. the first one. This is the first one from this qualifier. I'm saying this is enough. I think uh, we might see this trickle on out a little bit towards the end, because I think the top teams just look too good right now, and they look too consistent. This is a very rare upset for France now. But Ukraine, uh, Romania to some extent, they've looked really, really convincing to me. So we'll see what happens. Germany, good spot, like we said. Moldova, a team that's started off decently and then went a little quiet in the last two matches. Now in a really, really good position in this match six here, Felix. Good stuff from Germany. They need a big round. I feel like for any of these teams to come back, to have a realistic chance to come back, they need a big round because what we've seen historically as well on these types of qualifiers is it's highly unlikely that there's going to be a sudden burst of consistency and they just get eight nine maybe even double digit points time and time again so what's more realistic is one of these teams having a big round maybe catching up by i want to say 10 points and then then as a result of that maybe having another big round to back it off and maybe there's some of these top teams struggling for a couple of rounds too that's how usually these upsets tend to happen so for Germany, realistically, what, if, what would happen if they win the round? They would immediately be in a top six, right? Depending on how Azerbaijan obviously plays. Um, so it could very well happen. Uh, Ten points is the difference between them and like ninth, eighth place. So nothing out of the ordinary, nothing we haven't seen so far. Silas, though, 
Come back to this fight. It's going to be uh -oh. a fighting. The one team that we said was underperforming, uh -oh. haven't they? And they will hit some nasty nades. Maksha takes down Zardes, the first casualty for Turkey. Can they act on it? I don't think so. I don't think so. You can no. tell the rest of the players are very far off into the distance. Oh. And there's a shot out of it. Oh, my goodness, Wild. That is a nasty, nasty shot. And I think you've just once again crushed the hopes of Zerbia to make something big in this one. I don't even uh, think they got the flush at this point. Uh, wow, nope. what a shot. I think that's the furthest one we've ever had. I mean, good decision to get out of there and not go for the flash. I think that's completely the right play, but it doesn't matter when you hit shots like that, when Wild hits shots like that, when Doran hits nades like that. Aye, this game is tough sometimes. Romania, they were struggling. They were struggling in the early scrambles there versus Albania, but now they're cleaning things up around that Southern Martin area. A few more kills, another consistent bit of points on the board. Hungary says, well, we can try and keep you out of the circle, but we have to tank a whole lot of blue for it. And look at the meds on Citron, right? He's just not there. One first aid. I think there was one bandage. Not a whole lot going on. Or one booster, excuse me. Not a whole lot going on for Citro to actually stay here and try to punish Romania. Yeah. Man, this is so, so unfortunate for Serbia. I mean, they even had a really good spot inside the circle, right? It, they had everything they needed going for them. They just need to stay, stay alive as four players. And even that double nade was played to absolute perfection. I mean, one was behind the rock, one was in front of the rock. No matter where he moves, he's he's done. So that was that was perfectly played. Just unfortunate that the support was, was there. And that massive, massive shot ruins them another round. I mean, yeah. wild. Can you expect anyone to hit that shot? I don't think so. That's, I think, in ISF history, one of the longest shots we've ever seen. That's where the rare mini can actually be beneficial. We see a whole lot of AR yeah. SMG, and we see a whole lot of AR shotgun. We don't see a whole lot of DMRs, but sometimes that mini can really pay off. Now, Ukraine, they want to stop the approach of the Turkish squad. You saw Turkey there for a second, pulling up into Serbia, realizing, okay, we took a member down. We have numbers advantage here. Why not make use of it, right? Why not keep pushing a team that we can actually bully around? But quickly shot in the back, quickly the zone shifts away a little bit and they reposition and Silas is already in the kill feed somewhere else again, picking up a kill towards the Czech Republic. So business as usual here for the Turkish squad. And it's going to be very irrelevant what I said about 71 points, because they're not going to stay there. Yeah. Great. Not going to stay there. More shots now raining in. And some more nades now raining in as well. This is the first time Ukraine has really done something about Turkey, just, just playing around on that ridge line. And you can tell Turkey doesn't really know where they want to play this circle either. They've been rotating around this entire hillside for the last five minutes. And now the first fight is really being pressured onto them, and it is Ukraine engaging from the eastern side. That's a pretty good nade as well. Look how close those land. Look what a good an idea he has. But it is a reset for now. That is one confirm, one flush on the board. And that's again, it's really good to know for Ukraine. I think in a lot of other situations, they might just cancel off the fight at this point, but old boy is not hard enough. He knows this is the team to beat, and he wants to do it now. Swings around the side, flips on over the top, and this is a good chance that we see Turkey just going out here without any more to take home. Numbers are firmly in the favor of Ukraine, and you can see they want this, and they're going to get it. Boosman pushes around on the next ridge line, and teammate is there to flush him out as well. Chisile is left now. He's got the DBS, gets taken down, and Ukraine with old boy is going to seal the deal. Three frags being picked up. I think one was stolen by someone else, but that's a good, good position that Ukraine has just worked their way into uh, as well now. So Ukraine shutting down diver composition. Look at this. France yeah. and Turkey have now been taken down. They have a free pass onto any of these spots right now. Um, yeah. I mean, catching turkeys are going to be somewhat unrealistic. They would need to have a big, big game now from this position. But uh, France is absolutely in striking distance. And look at the map as well, right? Look at how much it does for your game to wipe out one team in front of you. Look how stacked this is towards the western side, the southwestern side, the northern side. But you take out one team next to you, and suddenly you have a little space to play with. You have a little bit of room to maneuver around. And uh, in a phase four, where we still have 17 teams... Space is so, so precious. Now, Germany, 
They have to figure out how much space they want to hold and how much they're giving up to Croatia here. Bit of an off angle through the window. But it's not meant to be. Doesn't get the opening that he would have liked and he falls back from it. And they will regroup to try and play off each other a little bit more. Croatia is still in sight. The city. And I said that Germany, yes, was in a really good spot. They, they still have to be incredibly careful of not losing a player here. With, with so many players all around them. The city doesn't necessarily give you too much of an advantage. And I would have loved for them to just branch out as soon as they won the hot job. But unfortunately, they haven't. Good news for them is Croatia has not a full team. And that's the closest to them. His has been spotted out now. He was kind of the anchor player of grabbing another sideline. With him being spotted, might get him tougher for Germany. 13 points as of right now. They desperately need more. They need to make this round count. And judging by the circle, I think the next phase might just be really troublesome because they haven't really seen the shift into Monte all that much. I'll have to wait and see. But yeah, like you said, would have been nice to branch out for Germany, but I don't think they had the time. I feel like they were busy with Azerbaijan for a very, very long time. And you can see there's still one Azerbaijan player kicking it. Somewhere to the south. But they have pretty good approaches to this road. So if the circle does go away from them, they should be a team that is able to cross the road. The main thing that I'm worried about is that they haven't really shown us consistency in the late game, right? It's just their position is good. They just haven't proven to us that they can do big things in these late games with other giants around them. I like that duo from Romania. And like a four-man Ukraine looking down from the top. Many, plenty of, of big, big teams around here. That's a big push. That's a whole lot of nades flying at Montenegro. Yeah, massive, massive push coming out. And Montenegro is trying to secure the top of the hill now. And it's a good fight to take. You gain lots of control, lots of space. You also are gaining rotation paths towards the eastern side to some degree because no one else can really shoot at you anymore. At least no one from up top. But they will need to make it count before they can really work with it. And still Georgia with four players left standing. All four players are alive. First one goes down now. That is Talo being caught by an eight. And you can see Montenegro is now trying oh, to no. make work. And yeah, I think they don't know where Ranger is. So I think that might be a problem. If he doesn't get spotted, maybe Hyde is going to be immediately taken down. But it's all four players up close now. And yes... Doesn't even matter. Georgia loses the second point. They had such a good push there. And then two of the players fall away while the other two stick around. It just didn't work out for them at all. Montenegro was not having it. Montenegro was not happy to sit and watch. And they they go back to fight it. And they only fight to find two players. Providing any sort of resistance to them. So I'm not sure what the thought process was for Georgia. It looked really, really good for a second. And then they kind of just disbanded the formation. And got punished for it. Now Montenegro, they'll have to make the send. They'll have to cross the road. Where they end up is is unsure. But what is sure is that there's going to be people waiting for them. Moldova four up, Ukraine four up. Uh, I've seen the I've seen the Luxembourg solo make his way across the road for sneakily. Um, the Azerbaijan solo is still proning it out somewhere here. So wherever you go, it's going to be contested, and it's going to be hard to make landfall. Yeah, really is. Ukraine is. Oh, to that southern side. Avlik gets a pretty good down here. But he's also going to get shot in the face himself. Has to be careful. Smokes are immediately raining out. No one's really making move on them just yet. And there's still Czech Republic inside the compound. Germany, the only behind. They'll have to fight off Croatia now. The breach comes on in. It's three players driving themselves to the city. At least metaphorically speaking. And there's the first one of hitting the first player. This Lashy being taken down, but just about survives. And somehow the Flames do not catch him all the way. Stays Ooh. out of the molly. Just takes a little bit of the flame now. They find an opening with a nade. Now they want to just commit on this. Someone's I don't think they know that the player's top floor. I don't think he, they oh. know he's vaulted in. This could be absolute disaster. He's got a ghillie. He might have three gear as well with it. And this could throw them completely into a riot. There's a P90 on the other side as well. Oh, this fight is so much harder than Germany thought it would be. Now comes around the corner, looks for a second as well. It's an absolute disaster. This is a hard, hard fight for Germany to win, and they might not even know about this res being stuck here. 
Yeah, but they're resting on their own as well. Gia was able to get the teammate back up. And that night should have happened way earlier. Now he's got it in his hands, but he needs to pop it perfectly. Both are rotating out of oh. it. It goes outside. It doesn't hit anyone. That is so unfortunate, Gia. If it would have come that next any earlier, it would have perfectly. But just like that, Croatia is almost going to be back to three plies. At least to two for the time being. Tsiki is in the process of being revived as well in germany look at this they've revived everyone they've got some more time to fight this but it needs to happen fast they need to work through this building they've got the dbs's to do so yes there's p90 on the other hand but that should be enough if they manage to get some good util into the building i see i see a flash and i see two nades there in the hands i see of course big guns on the other side but util can clear out a lot of these buildings especially the top floor should be easily dealt with now and nade comes in the other side. That's a good nade oh. track, though. That's the P90 out of the picture. And there's another one. It's just one left to deal with. They know exactly where he is. They have all the space in the world. And Germany might just do it. They might just take out Croatia here, Felix. Yes, they do, but they're also playing now. GI has been taken down. That's that main fragger. And yes, they will. They will take him out. It's the first time that we might see Germany potentially being in a top eight scenario. But as I said, GI has been taken down. It's it's their main fragger. They they really need him to work out of this city. Because look who's waiting on the other side. So many teams, so many angles. Maybe taking out Montenegro might even be the best case scenario here because I don't even think they have vehicles. With Montenegro now making their way out of it, not even that might be a possibility that they can play off of. Belarus has already got a player towards the western side as well, so I don't know. Maybe it get maybe it becomes possible if Belarus kind of gets scared away and maybe Poland breaches them, so that one player has to drive away. A bit of tension it is. Yes, tension it is. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I don't know how Germany will move out of this. I think it's going to be really tough. I think the move to Pentangic is completely possible, but the problem is the other teams next to them, right? That's what makes it so hard. The problem is uh, Montenegro. The problem is Moldova to an extent as well. So they'll have to they'll have to either get some smokes up and like, a whole lot of smokes to try and cross through or get some vehicles, like you said. Poland have to make a move. I'm just not sure if the breach is their move because they've been so passive so far, Felix. I, I feel like they'd rather find a shack here and be content with it than breaching a full team. That's just not the Poland I've seen so far. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens to Germany as we watch Serbia trying to hold on to the compound. Serbia also a team we haven't really been seeing in the late game all that much. Yeah, but no. three Elims now is a good start and they are into placement points. Man, I, I can only imagine what would have happened if Zobia wouldn't have lost that player early. That, that would have been the first time, the very first time they could have made something happen. Germany now is trying to make the cross as expected. They will lose players in the process. Unfortunately for them, Poland did not drive into Belarus, and that gave Belarus all the time in the world now to focus on this rotation. As we see, a good knock coming out against Ukraine. Poland, once again, in terms of survivability, they're way up there. They are hard to kill. <laughs> They're good at surviving. Just gonna close out the games a little bit more. And they'll be up there consistently right now. Almost 10 points ahead of sixth, but I'm looking at I'm looking at where Belarus is and the positions they are taking and the fights they're taking. Um I think that gap is gonna shrink a little bit. Ukraine on the other side. Big fight for them to take. Not an easy one either, Felix. No, not an easy one. They will have players right above them that they will need to hold out on now. Uh, first of all, we have the five Moldova against Montenegro. Now, Montenegro was one of the teams outside of Germany that needed to make it outside of the city. And they'll just be decimated too. If not by Belarus, then by Moldova. That just wants to keep their edge clean. That last nade is picture perfect. My goodness. Is that one hell of a nade? Yes, he was known, but you gotta you got to time that to absolute perfection to hit it like that. And they did. Five frags is being picked up in total. Moldova going into the late game with lots of confidence as well. Oof. Nice shots. Coming up old boy. Really making a bit of an advertisement stance here for the mini this game. Really putting up shots is Ukraine. Multiple members just nailing people out of cars. Now, Belarus, we said they had all the time in the world to deal with this Western approach. Not super successful so far. They've really... Uh, had to pull back a little bit. They've lost a player in the process. And they've given up a whole lot of space to Moldova. As the shots ring out in these long-range sprays, they are such a problem sometimes. You're in the middle of a fight. You can't really reposition. You can't really decide where they cover. And then someone on the other side of the map, like Folly, has time to unleash with a 6x. 
Serbia's not in a good spot here, Felix. Yeah, no, Serbia's not in a good spot, unfortunately. Um, I can I can only touch on this once more. I can only imagine what they could have done here with four players after live. I think all the teams around them up on that hillside wouldn't have been able to 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 take as much space as they're able to take now that they've been only you know a, a three men up in that in that um, building site. But yeah, to put it like that, Serbia now no vehicles, almost no utility. I imagine needing to move inside the circle where there's almost no playing space. I, I, I have no idea how the sidelines are going to be in that edge as soon as Moldova needs to move out, but I think Moldova will still have angles on them. And if not Moldova, maybe Belarus, who is now rotating out of the compound as well. They've got a couple of really good ridge lines and a job to support them as well. Things you love to say. Got to make things just a little bit easier. Watch me find one with the DMR. It's Ukraine coming in from the other side. And just like that, Serbia is sent packing... Probably their best game so far. They've gotten themselves into late game, at least got themselves some elims, but not really able to come out of that compound victorious as Ukraine make a really good play around the ridge below them to make sure they survive. Poland in classic Poland fashion, proning on the edge with smoke, staying alive in this without really getting their, their hands dirty all too much. They might have a whole lot of Uta left in the arsenal when the fights kick off here, Felix, because they've been just chilling on this. Yeah, they've just been chilling on this, but it's been working out for them. So you can't really, you can't really judge them. Forty-six points speaks for itself, in my opinion. Yeah. And Belarus is right behind them. Thirty-nine points on them for all of these teams right now. It means a good chunk of points being secured for qualification. Everyone could potentially make it inside the top five for this one, if they aren't already. Belarus and Moldova, obviously, especially need these points because uh, they are the only team right now not inside the top five of all these teams still left alive and Poland now being the first one to be decimated leaves just three teams standing Ukraine has made quick work out of everyone on the eastern side and the question is can they be stopped I think this is looking pretty good for Moldova but we've just seen what Ukraine has been pulling off in fights and it's hard to believe that Moldova is the one coming out on top here right they have a little bit more space they have a little bit more numbers but I'm not sure if they have the better cover. I feel like the best kind of terrain is actually what Belarus is playing. They have good low ground, lots of ridges. They still have a bit of util. And you look at some of these Moldovan players, they don't have a lot of gear left. They haven't have a lot of bullets left. They don't have a lot, have a lot of meds. They've expanded most of what they were given this game. So might be tricky here in the end, but they are trying to grab a little bit more space. You can see zero meds at all on V8. He makes a risky push. He gets put down low, and he's never going to heal that back up. Yeah, I don't think so. Molotov hits perfectly, but old boy still makes it outside and somehow stays alive. He's playing around the car. How is he still no standing up? But peeks around. Hey, Eugene Dance hits the headshot, and he takes him down as well. What a play coming out from old boy. He will be punished, but he did get the frag before that, and that was very important for Ukraine indeed. That buys him a whole lot of time. That knock is not something that should not have happened. Foley has him completely, has the cover, has the cross, but he buys time there, old boy. He buys so much time for the rest of the squad to try and make moves with this. Now they are going to try to find a 2v1, right? They're trying to isolate a weakness, but I think the res has just come through. Foley's turned around his attention, but Foley only has a bolt action here in his hands. So if he misses one bolt shot, he's not going to be a whole lot of help in this fight. It's Belarus, though, that is closing this one out and is not letting Ukraine take control at all. No, Ukraine just can't seem to find a spot where they're safe of the onslaught of, of players towards the south and western side. Either Moldova or Belarus has really got an angle on them at, at, at any and all times, to be honest. And that leaves Ukraine at the at the mercy of the zone. And right now, it's just one player left standing. And meanwhile, Moldova has made a couple of good pushes towards Belarus as well. It's a quick trade for Mars in hand. Takes out Foley, denies any kind of further push and makes some... Good, what good. is that? Uh, uh, what the just witnessed? He just, <laughs> he just got thrown oh, up into the, the air, but he stays alive somehow. It's a good night back at them, but it's going to stay at three on three. Look at the bullets. 36 oh, on V8. Wow. Tension. Instantly banged out by the nade. But they have nothing left, the Moldova players. Pay attention when you see how, much, how many nades they have, how many bullets they have. There's not a whole lot going on. They might have been able to, to loot old boy's body now. But they really had absolutely nothing before this fight started. Three gear on Tulika, plenty of bullets, MG3, plenty of meds, completely different scenario. 
But how much does that matter when he's alone versus two three mats? Yeah, I'm not so sure it matters all too much. Goldex and ah. their representation now here of, of Moldova being he in might big do this. trouble and somehow Tulika still got a good option now to do he this. He might do this. He sees the last player. Malo, he's all what? on his own and he gets taken down. What is just happening? Ukraine out of everyone is still winning this round. We thought the sidelines would be way too much. They were open on not only Belarus's side but also Moldova's side for the majority of this round and as soon as that fight started to happen they somehow cling back and turn things around and it was only Tulika that for the last couple of minutes and he somehow manages to third party the very last player and they just did not oh, expect yeah, it yeah, massive yeah. plays coming out from ukraine as they will to secure the last round of the day i was saying that's a one with three with three and then i realized there's two knocked on that on that yeah. on that squad on the right and he just catches up one on the left catches one on the right and just like that i mean i thought they had the res but the res was not worth a whole lot when the player's 10 hp right after it no. right so bad knock Oh my oh, god. Yeah, yeah. That's a crazy turnaround for Ukraine, but I, I wanna say it's a well deserved one. They played a really good game. When you look at where they came from yeah. and who they took out to be there, uh, well deserved from Ukraine. Big showing from them. We're gonna talk about Turkey, right? Uh, if we talk about teams they took out, and there we have it. Uh, that, I mean, you kinda meet the toughest team in phase three, you clean wipe them, then you kinda, at some, to some degree at least, have done what you need to do to kind of deservingly win a round, right? And and that's that's what they did ultimately. Um, good play around that that hillside. I felt like Turkey wasn't really sure what yeah. they wanted to go from there. Uh, good shown from from Germany as well. We haven't really seen too much of them, unfortunately. They 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 fall short every single time of, of reaching late game this time around as well. I don't think that was a placement point in them. I think they they went out as ninth, or just outside of placement points as well. And then obviously Ukraine, old boy as well with that peak, uh, somehow staying alive, playing around the card, doing things, and then. Tulika coming alive just when he needed to. Both players being knocked. He realizes that. It peaks across the ridge line. And it's the last couple of shots in a very convincing fashion. Ukraine, I want to see the overall leaderboard now because maybe, maybe, maybe there's a way. Because they've taken out Turkey completely cleanly in the very first stages of this game, maybe there's a way they caught up to them. Uh, I think so. I think yeah. so because the gap was pretty small before we started this map. Yes, it, uh, it really was. And they get they just took a 12 kill win, right? Where yeah. Turkey pretty much had nothing in this whole round. I think they had two or three kills, maybe. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I think I've just heard we're not gonna have the scoreboard for you today, but we have six more matches tomorrow, so we have a whole another day of oh, this. Yeah. And I can't wait. It's been fun to it's been fun to cast. It's been fun to watch. It's been fun to see you guys in chat. Um, it's gonna be tomorrow, same time, same place. So. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to miss you there. We do hear from production. We do have leaderboard, actually. We do have leaderboard, actually, ready for you guys. So you don't need to wait until tomorrow. And we can... Uh, we can... We can... Just a minute, as I'm here. We're just a minute. So do stay tuned for just a minute. Um, so yeah, we don't have to wait until tomorrow. Interestingly enough, um, you, you said as well that I think Ukraine has now beaten Turkey. I thought that was going to be impossible for the day. But Turkey has still done, despite being caught up. I think that's not a testament to how bad Turkey has now played these last couple of games. It's been more of a testament to how strong Ukraine has been. Securing two dinners in a day, and once again, in not so easy rounds. Because we've seen e rather easy rounds. For example, by Poland being picked up. That was a rather easy round, I'd say. In that compound, they weren't really contested. Yes, they flushed out Germany really, relatively early on. But after that, no one was on their edge anymore. This time around, Ukraine... They had to fight throughout the entirety of this game. And what feels like starting minute one until the very last minute. Uh, so good stuff coming out from Ukraine. Maybe it's just a testament of, of that you have to use the word impossible a little bit less. I think uh, we all expected yeah. Turkey to be, to be towards the stop. top here. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, th these teams have shown us that everything is possible, right? And these teams have shown yeah. us that uh, even in Azerbaijan, it really has not been popping off, uh, can get a massive game out of their backs not even and you just talked about this game was not gifted for ukraine no. neither was the last game for azerbaijan they fought their way through that whole lobby right so the teams have just shown us that we don't know what to expect from them and we don't know what they're going to pull off because there's a lot of very talented players in this lobby and it's not just the top three top four top five teams that can really get things going no it's it's so many more teams and I mean, what we've just missed, witnessed in the last two games, once again, this is a perfect example of this. Even teams like Germany and Serbia now having had at least 
tiny chances of yeah of getting a, a double digit round finally uh, i think serbia are even more surprising to me than germany they will actually end the day below germany um both of these teams are expected to be a little bit higher up but yeah there's there's <laughs> there's been a couple of teams now that have just been outshined by yeah um obviously turkey ukraine france as well france started the day off stronger than they ended it yes but they've also been consistently just just getting into good good circles they haven't been able to close that game so i think that's what's going to change tomorrow in my opinion because the way they've played it uh, it's bound to happen at some point i think so too and i think this is the first misstep from france right this is the first game yeah. where they don't get any points um this hasn't happened for, before for them at all they've been crazy uh in consistency and uh yeah i think for me like you said you you, you saw the scrim results you realized france france was a big team i didn't have them on my on my list and i've been proven extremely wrong because oh, yes. i think they like i said right most consistent team today not even the best team today but the most consistent team today and then um like we talked about as well it's not like poland has been insane after the first two matches but they still got 50 points they're still uh, you don't get them from two they didn't get them from two games they didn't just like get luck out at the start they've played really solidly since then and they, they keep getting into these placements and if they continue to do that, then they'll be really hard to push out of that top five. Yeah, um, wholeheartedly agree. So, uh, I think, I think it's it's still just in a. Uh, we're gonna see the overlead one in a second, yes. But I think still overall, just based off of my feeling, we've already seen our theory at the beginning of this broadcast kind of come true. We we said there was gonna be certain favorites. We said Ukraine was gonna be one of the favorites. We said. Um, France was going to be one of the favorites. We said Turkey, very obviously, was going to be one of the favorites. And all these teams have performed uh, beautifully. And then there's a couple of other teams that we said were going to have a good chance at this, like Azerbaijan. They've now proven it as well. Uh, so once again, coming back at this, the only real, I want to say, big upset that we've had so far is yeah. really is Serbia. The team that has qualified last year have such a draw to a day. Um, considering we only have six more chances, realistically, they would almost need to not only double almost triple their average points now for them yeah. to still qualify what, what they're at right now 14 points the cutoff point is probably going to be somewhere around 40 right now so not even a win is going to put them into qualification that's that's why you want to be at all times we said before this game that was actually the case serbia and germany with one round could have been at least in very close proximity to qualification spots um maybe like five six seven points off of it um now that's going to be even bigger, despite them having a rather good round, because all these top teams and these runner-ups are having a good round. Yeah, exactly. And like we said, there was a chance to catch up. That The, the cutoff was quite low for a while, but Game 5 and 6 have raised it massively. Ukraine on 76 has actually passed Turkey and in 71 second place. France is a big zero rounder for them. They stay in 64. Poland stay on 50. And then it gets really, really stacked. It's 50, 47, 47 there, Felix, right around the cutoff. Wow. Yeah. Moldova, round 40 still. Romania, Moldova, we're talking about runner up. Uh, still had good yeah. rounds. Still not in qualification spots. That just goes to show you how, how consistent all these teams were, especially Belarus as well. Uh, I feel like we've, we've un I, I at least have underestimated Belarus massively. They've, they've shown us really yeah. good performances. Maybe For not sure. in their last match. I feel like their last match was kind of a throwaway to some degree and yes they've gotten so in a bit as well but in the other games i think that they were more of a testament to to what these guys can accomplish azerbaijan only really doing big things in that one round unfortunately it's not going to be enough to to catch up as well they need one more of that tomorrow and they need it early so they can actually be in contention there's serbia and there's germany 18 and 17 points Neither of them looking great right now. We talked about them a little bit. Germany, because we're just biased, and Serbia, because they are the hmm. big names in the bottom half of the scoreboard. Uh, you said they'd have to triple their points per game. I think that's probably accurate. Um, a doubling is not going to be enough, at least. I think yeah. if we're looking at 20, 40 more points here, um, that might not be enough. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, rough times for them. But again, I think got plenty of chances to come back tomorrow. Six games tomorrow. Um, it's not impossible. It's far, far from impossible. And even for Serbia now, big win, twenty points. You know, not even a, not even a big win considering what we've seen today. And suddenly they're yeah. right up there in right up there in eighth place or something, fighting for fifth. So, so nothing's done. Nothing is decided yet, uh, except maybe maybe Ukraine at the top there. 
and uh, maybe Turkey at the top, and then everything else is still up for grabs, I think. I think Turkey with that record-breaking win, 25 yeah. frags, and the dinner will have actually secured qualification as well, despite not ending on a high. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to say goodbye for the evening. We will be having six more games tomorrow, obviously, and that will conclude the ISF World Esports Championship Europe qualifier with that best of 12 that we have at hand. Starting off with the Sanok tomorrow, same day, um, not same day, different day, say time, yes, different <laughs> day, same time. And that's how we're going to end it. Ladies and gentlemen, have a nice evening. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.